When I woke up this morning, the sky was pretty much as you see it right behind me, drizzly, overcast, gray. It was the kind of morning that made you want to pull the covers back up over your head and go back to sleep. Then I remembered, wait a minute, it's September. It's really not that cold outside. But it still had that rainy kind of drizzly chill that just made you want to feel like, again, going back and getting some sleep. But then I thought of this question. Hello, I'm Kathy Bartow. Why does the rain fall on the righteous as well as the unrighteous? And why does the sun shine on the evil as well as the good? Well, Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 to 45, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. God sends his rain and his son on both the righteous and the unrighteous. The fifth chapter of Matthew demonstrates to us that Jesus understands the trials we encounter and why we are told to focus on him and him alone. This is how we're able to come through all of life's difficulties. While on this earth, everyone experiences both good things and bad things. However, as Christians, we are told to be grateful to God in all situations, both good and bad. We are to be disciples of Christ Jesus, spreading the good news of salvation only through him and what he did for us on the cross. Let's look at the word righteousness. It is being right in the eyes of our creator, being right in the eyes of God. Isaiah 64, verse 6. All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. We must make sure we obey the whole law in the sight of the Lord our God. That's what he has commanded us to do. If we obey his law, we'll be doing what he requires of us. For we will be counted as righteous when we obey all the commands the Lord our God has given us. We know, however, that this is impossible since no one is perfect like God is. Only God is perfect. However, we know that the path of righteousness leads to life. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 28. There is life in doing what is right. Along that path, you will never die. And God is life. God takes pleasure when his children are seeking righteousness. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 9. The Lord hates how sinners live, but he loves those who run after what is right. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 3. Do what is right and fair. The Lord accepts that more than sacrifices. And Proverbs 21, 21. Anyone who wants to be godly and loving finds life, success, and honor. How can we become righteous with God? By believing that his one and only son came to earth to be a living sacrifice for the sins of mankind. All the sins of mankind, past, present, and yet to come. Jesus commands us to pursue righteousness in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So does the Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, 
endurance, and gentleness. How does the Holy Spirit help us to walk in righteousness with God? Well, listen to John chapter 16, verses 8 through 15. When he comes, he will prove that the world's people are guilty. He will prove their guilt concerning sin God and godliness and judgment. The world is guilty as far as sin is concerned. That's because people do not believe in me. The world is guilty as far as godliness is concerned. That's because I am going to the Father, where you can't see me anymore. The world is guilty as far as judgment is concerned. That's because the devil, the prince of this world, has already been judged. I have much more to say to you. It is more than you can handle right now. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is still going to happen. He will bring me glory. That's because what he receives from me, he will show to you. Everything that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said what the Holy Spirit receives from me, he will show to you. Praise be to God for his word. Till next time, peace be with you.